The purpose of this video is to describe the endovascular repair of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. The procedure is often referred to by the acronym EVAR, which is short for endovascular aneurysm repair. The procedure is preferably done in a hybrid theater, which includes all the facilities and equipment required for major and open vascular surgery, endovascular procedures, and therefore combined open and endovascular procedures. In this case, the patient is already under general anesthesia, a central venous catheter has been placed for fluid administration, an endotracheal tube is placed for ventilation. The theater nurse has already prepared the lower abdomen, femoral areas and upper thighs with an appropriate antiseptic solution and is now preparing the area with sterile drapes. Only the femoral areas are left open. The theater nurse has also prepared all her equipment in advance. Even tools that are not used routinely are at hand. The anesthetist and the whole surgical team have access to the patient's vital signs on at least two monitors in this theater. This allows for the assessment of blood pressure, pulse, oxygen saturation, and ECG changes in real time. The surgery is initiated by making an incision over the femoral artery to allow direct access to the blood vessels where it passes from the abdominal cavity onto the leg. This artery is specifically used due to the fact that it has a large diameter and because of the fact that it's relatively superficial. After the femoral arteries have been exposed, they are isolated with elastic loops that are used to encircle them. These loops are used to control hemorrhage or bleeding. The proximal and distal control has been attained of both femoral arteries. Access to the artery is now created by puncturing the artery with a needle, placing a temporary guide wire, and placing a sheath over the guide wire through the common femoral artery into the external iliac artery. This sheath is important due to the fact that it protects the blood vessel from the, the guide wires that are passed through it. The same procedure is followed on the contralateral femoral artery. After this has been completed, access has been created through both femoral arteries into the abdominal part of the, the arterial system. A long guide wire is advanced through the sheath, through the aneurysm and into the proximal aorta above the level of the renal arteries under x-ray guidance, also known as fluoroscopy. A marked catheter with a cooled end, which is referred to as a pigtail catheter, is advanced over the guard wire into the proximal abdominal aorta just above the renal arteries under fluoroscopy. On the other side, a soft guard wire is advanced before a catheter is placed over it and a stiff guard wire is advanced through the catheter into the thoracic aorta. The scent procesus is inserted into the abdominal aorta with a special delivery system. This delivery system is passed over the stiff wire through the iliac arteries, through the aneurysm, into the proximal part of the abdominal aorta. Special markers indicate the junction between the bare metal struts and the prosthesis. These markers make it possible to place a device precisely just below the renal arteries. The main body of the stent prosthesis delivery system is passed over the stiff guard wire into the femoral artery. The main body of the stent prosthesis delivery system is further advanced over the stiff guard wire into the abdominal aorta. Exceptional care is taken not to injure the femoral artery. The correct proximal position of the main body is determined by injecting contrast through the pigtail catheter and assessing the level of the renal arteries. The position could be adjusted at this point in time to avoid occluding the renal arteries. By turning the delivery system of the stent prosthesis in an anticlockwise direction, the plastic cover is pulled down, deploying the stent inside the neck of the aneurysm. Once again, 
displacement is confirmed by means of injecting contrast through the pigtail catheter. After the proximal position is confirmed, the rest of the main body is deployed, including the limb extending into the left iliac artery. Care is taken to avoid occluding the internal iliac arteries. The internal iliac arteries are the main blood supply to the pelvic region as well as the distal part of the bowel. The proximal nose cone is opened up to deploy the bare metal struts above the stem craft. In this case, the bare metal struts also contain talons that fix the stem craft in position to avoid distal migration. A softer wire is placed on the contralateral side to cannulate the contralateral limb of the main stem processes. This can be quite cumbersome, but in this specific case, it was relatively straightforward due to the favorable anatomy. You can see the, the pigtail catheter being advanced into the main body. A stiff wire is advanced through the contralateral side before the contralateral limb is inserted via the femoral artery and iliac arteries into the main stem processes. The contralateral limb is then deployed under fluoroscopy to complete the bifurcated stem graft processes to effectively exclude the aneurysm from the circulation. A compliant balloon is advanced over the guard wires and in inflated in the proximal and distal landing zones, as well as the overlap between the main body and the extended sections. The purpose of this balloon is to oppose the stain graft and the material of the stain graft um, and the wall of the abdominal aorta above the aneurysm as well as below the aneurysm. It is important to note that most of the work during the stent deployment is done under X-ray guidance or fluoroscopy. This image demonstrates the completed procedure with a successful exclusion of the abdominal aorta by the stent graft. After the delivery devices, balloons, catheters and wires have been removed, Interrupted, non-absorbable sutures are placed in the femoral artery to close the defect that was created by the deployment system. All the sutures have been placed. The clamps are removed to confirm hemostasis. When we have confirmed that there is no active bleeding, this wound can be closed. Two layers of interrupted absorbable sutures are placed in the subcutaneous fat before the skin is closed with skin clips. The patient is then taken to the intensive care unit where the patient's blood pressure is monitored over the next few hours. If everything goes according to the plan, the patient can be transferred to the, the general ward the next day where the focus is on mobilization. As soon as the patient is able to mobilize well, the patient can be discharged. Thank you for your attention. For more information on this subject, as well as other aspects of vascular disease, please visit vascular.co.za.